What's going on guys? Welcome back to Trapfish Aquatics. Today I'm finally back getting back into the YouTube video creating for you guys so that you guys can enjoy more Trapfish Aquatics content. And I want to talk a little bit before we get into the video why I've been gone for a little bit over a month and you know why I haven't been making fish videos. And a lot of people have been asking me, did you quit YouTube? When's your next video? Why aren't you making videos anymore? And it's because we had three and a half months off during our COVID lockdown. Um, and I got to sit home and make videos and hang out with you guys on the internet all day. And life caught up and I had to go back to work. And if you're not at work for three and a half months, things pile up. So I've been pretty busy at work and trying to deal with getting back into the swing of working as well as taking care of family and all the fish tanks and I had to rebalance all that so I figured the easiest thing that I could do is take off of YouTube for a little while to help rebalance my life and then once everything got back into the swing of things we could start making videos again so hopefully we can get back into the swing of making videos um, they're probably not going to be on a basis like I was doing two three videos a week it's probably going to be one a week one every two weeks um, that way I have time to actually film it, edit it, and I'm not staying up until 3 in the morning to wake up at 5 to go to work the next day, editing videos. So, I do have some new things going on. Uh, the fish room has not been stagnant. I have had done a couple things different, some new fish, some new things in the fish room, if we will. Um, and I'll talk about that a little bit, um, show you guys some clips, but there's going to be more videos on these things coming out in the future. So first thing I want to talk about is one of the 20 gallon tanks over here. I have a pair of Cabrensis, male and female, and they are breeding. I'll show you guys a little bit of, of a clip of that right here. Here's my Cabrensis. And here's my baby Cabrensis. Right, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I wasn't even really planning on breeding these guys, but they're happy enough that they're doing it anyway, so that's really good. Um, and I do have another 20 gallon tank set up so that once these fry grow out a little bit, I can move them and uh, everybody should be happy and healthy. Um, all my convict cichlids are gone. Uh, we sold all of them, took care of that. And I don't know if I want to breed any more of those or if I want to set that tank up with something different. Currently, my big uh, hyphen spotted Pleco that was out in my 125 gallon is in there because he was starting to pick on the fancy goldfish because I couldn't get him enough food. I was feeding him zucchini, but the goldfish were picking at it and eating it too. Um, so I had to move him out because he was starting to go after them because they were eating his food. It wasn't going to work out. So he got moved in here temporarily. Um, and a subscriber of mine reached out, uh, Tim Nelson, and he actually hooked me up with a bunch of little baby bristlenose plecos. Uh, they're all back here in this tank. You can see the little algae wafers down here. You'll probably see a little bit of something going on, but the camera's really not picking it up. Um, but I think there's 15 of them in there. And they're doing really well. Those guys are really cool, and I'm hoping to get them spread out across these tanks soon. I also want to try breeding these guys, which I don't think is going to be that big of an issue. So this might become a bristlenose breeding tank. Um, yeah, I might put some other stuff in there too, but we're still working on that. Um, this tank right here, I finally got some shrimp. Finally. Everybody in my area has been completely sold out of shrimp because of COVID. They can't get any imports in from Thailand or anything like that. So um, there was actually a guy that posted in our local Pennsylvania group, said, hey, I've got some Sabwasser Tang, and I'm trying to get rid of it. So I messaged him. I'm trying, where are you? Because um, I really want to get my hands on some of that. And turns out he is six houses up the road from me. So talk about convenient. I went over there, got some, some uh, Wasser Tang, and uh, he breeds shrimp. So I picked up a couple shrimp off of him too. Um, they are Blue Dreams, and I'll show you guys a quick little video of those guys right here. Okay. 
And I'll be honest, shrimp are probably like the coolest thing in my fish room right now, in my opinion. Right? There are these little, little bitty tiny things, but they are super cool. I already have buried females. Super excited to have them uh, repopulate, grow more shrimp out, and then really sort out the colors to try and get a real deep blue, um, kind of like a blue dream almost. And then uh, I got my five gallon rack over there. We'll start sorting them out and get the different colors going. I'm still waiting on a shipment from somebody else of some more shrimp, so really excited to get that going. Um, I don't think I have much of anything else really going on in the fish room right now, but I do have a whole bunch of driftwood. Thank you, Tim. You gave me that too. Tim gave me the hookup, and I am super, super appreciative of that, and he's really been on my butt trying to get me to make more videos, so thank you for that, Tim. And uh, I will probably be rescaping this 55 gallon using a bunch of that driftwood he gave me, and uh, I'm really excited to get that tank redone too. So enough talking right now. I'll hook you guys up with a little bit of a video. I know you guys saw the, uh, the axolotl stand for the 40 gallon breeder. I got that tank or that stand built. And then you saw me build the aquarium cooling lid. That's for the axolotl tank as well. And then I kind of left you guys hanging for a month and you've been wondering what's going on with that tank. So without further ado, here's a quick video of me setting that whole tank up. And then uh, we'll come back at the end, and I'll give you guys an update since it's been up and running for about a month now. So, enjoy the video. So the cooling system is set up, as you can see up here that one fan is blowing, and I actually had to turn this one off because uh, there's a slight problem. This fan blowing in, that fan blowing out, there's enough pressure that it's actually sucking water up and blowing it out of the top of the tank. So I'll hook it up real quick and show you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to flip this fan over to have both of them blow into the tank and see if that fixes it. If not, I'm just going to run one fan 
and we'll just leave that one there as a backup. So let me flip that over and we'll see if that makes a better, a better impact. All right, so I took that fan and flipped it over and it is working good now. Not sucking up water anymore. And if you look, you can see this going on right there. And you can actually see there's a gap right here. The air pressure is actually lifting this lid a little bit. And the feeding holes are actually pushing out quite a bit of air. But lots of airflow on there now. It's actually cooling the water down. It was 63 degrees there for a little bit. It's now 61, I believe. Yep. So it's working pretty good. Alright, so the tank and cooling system is set up and running. We're going to let it run for a couple days here. I have pre-cycled filters in this tank. Uh, I am going to be adding an ammonia source to allow this to continue to cycle and establish itself. And then in a couple days, we're going to add our axolotls to the tank and get this tank thriving with life and looking amazing. So today was the first true test of the cooling system. and. It was 94 degrees here today. I'd say that's working pretty well. Okay, so here's the tank over here in the corner. This is my wife's corner. So here's Peekaboo, the axolotl, right here. Doing very well. Overall setup on the tank, still holding well after a month. We have a Inkbird thermostatic controller hooked up onto the fans, keeping the tank cool. And overall, it's doing really good. We even had some days high 90s, and it's currently set to 67. It turns on once the temperature hits 68 because it's got a one degree variance. The tank never went over 68 degrees. The fans cooled it right back down. They work really, really well. Um, so overall, super happy with the way this came out. Peekaboo's really enjoying it. And uh, yeah, that's the setup on the tank. Alright guys, that's pretty much it for today's video. Just a little bit of me getting back into the, the filming thing to get more content up for you guys and get myself back into making the videos. So that's pretty much it. Uh, there is one more thing I want to talk about. There is a young man who has started a YouTube channel in my local area and he wants to help people learn about fish. And his name is Ian. He's eight years old. And I want to give him a little bit of a shout out because he's raising guppies, breeding them, selling them to his local fish store, and helping support the hobby. And I think that's awesome. Um, so I want to give his channel a little bit of a shout out. It's right here, Ian's Fish Room. Uh, he's only got like 20 some subscribers now, but I love this kid and his content. So feel free to check that out and give him a subscribe if you really want to. Link is going to be in the description for his page as well. And thank you guys for watching Traffish Aquatics. Links, as always, in the description down below. And I will see you guys in the next video. Mm -hmm.